Hey everyone, this is Ben Weir from Solidbox. This is the first video in a series of four where we're going to talk about some of the features and capabilities of power surfacing for SOLIDWORKS. Basically, what power surfacing is, is a very powerful add-on for SOLIDWORKS, which allows you to create very complex shapes within SOLIDWORKS without having to use all the splines and lofts and all the surfacing tools that you would otherwise have to use. It's a very, very quick and efficient way to create organic and complex shapes without all of the hassle of curvature continuity and splines and lofts and all of these other things that make creating these kind of shapes very tiresome and cumbersome. In this first video, I'm going to talk about some of the basic features and functionality of the add-on. This video will be a little bit longer than the next few videos, but understanding the basics of this add-on are really important before we get to some more complex features and functionality. So without any further ado, let's go ahead, jump on into Power Surfacing and take a look at some of its capabilities. I want to start by covering how to create the basic shape which you'll end up morphing into the desired shape towards the end of your project. For this, you just come into the Power Surfacing tab, not the Power Surfacing RE, just the Power Surfacing tab for now. And on the far left hand side, mine currently says Create Box, but if you drop this down, you can see that you can start with a box, a torus, cylinder, surface, cone, and so on. But for now, let's just start with a box. Initially, it's just gonna look like a ball. That's because we only have one segment set for the length, width, and height of this shape. Let's first define the overall dimensions of the cage that you see around the ball here. Let's set the length to 150 millimeters, the width to 75 and I'll also set the height to 75. So we sort of have this rugby ball shape. Now let's just cover the segments. Currently or by default they'll be set to one on each dimension. The more you increase the more detail and the more lines and points that you have to pull and push. So ideally you'd like to have the minimum number required for your desired overall shape. Um, so for, for this example, I'm just going to set it to three in the length and then I'm going to set the width and the height to two. The more you increase, you can see the corners get more bunched up and um, the changes you make will be more local to the point or edge or surface face that you select. So like I said, this is why it's important to sort of use the minimum required uh, for your desired finished project. So I'll just set this back to two. Um, you can actually set this right now is defaulting to the top plane um, and the origin. You can set this to mid plane so that the origin is in the very center of the shape. Um, and you can also do a rotational offset. So you can select how, how much this is rotated on that point. But for now, I'm just going to leave both of these unchecked. The next thing I want to cover quickly is the viewing options. Obviously, you have you can turn off the faces, you can turn off the edges, you can turn off the points. Um, but we'll leave all of these on for now. And also this, okay, so right now I have it selected and you can kind of view this cage-like thing around the outside. This is the boundary for the shape. It won't ever really extend beyond these parameters or this cage, if you like. More often than not, I don't have it in this setting. I actually have it in this one, which kind of snaps the edges and points to the surface. I prefer this kind of looks neater, it just in my opinion gives you a little bit more uh, control over the exact shape that you want to achieve. It kind of helps you to view the contours of the shape a bit better. And finally, you have this very geometric box-like one. This is useful on uh, quite a few occasions, but for now we'll, we'll leave this in this mode and uh, I'll cover some of the uses for the other viewing modes later on. So let's just, once you've done this, let's just go ahead and click OK, and you'll be prompted with this new window. This is where you do the majority of the manipulation of the shape, and it's where you can really select the different parts of the shape and start to tug, push and pull, twist, rotate, scale, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm gonna go over some of the filters real quick. You can filter out, so right now it's selected so that nothing's filtered out. You can select the points, you can select the edges, and you can select the faces. Sometimes that's not what you want. If you have a complex shape and you don't want to accidentally select one of the edges or one of the points, let's say you want to just select the face and you don't want to worry about clicking on these, 
you can simply come over here and just select faces. Now you can't select the edge or the point. You can only select the faces. Likewise with the edges, you can select it so you only select edges and also with the points. Can't select the edges, can't select the faces, you can only select the points. For now, and for most instances, you'll probably leave it on all three so you can select whatever you want. If you want to select multiple edges or faces or points, you can select one and you can hold on the control key and select another and another and another. Note though, using the control key only, you can only select either the faces or the edges. So if I try and, so I've got these four faces selected. If I try and hold down control and click on the edge, it's not going to do that. It's going to deselect or reselect another face near to it. Same with the points. So you can only really select multiple of one type. So edges, you can select or just the points. There we go. Um, so there is a quicker way of doing this though, however. So using the double click command, if you click near the top of a face, for example, it's gonna select everything in that band. This is really useful. You might wanna move this or uh, rather scale it so it kind of bloats the shape a little bit more. Let me just undo that quickly. Or so yeah, so if you select the top of the face segment, it's going to select that band. If you select the side of the face, it's going to select this band. This works exactly the same for the edges. If I select the center of the edge, you'll see it's going to select all of the edges on the circumference of the shape around, like just like the band for the surfaces. If you select near the top or the bottom, it's going to select the band of edges going in the other direction. So this is great. It allows you to scale, move, rotate and so on, which is great. And it makes your process a lot quicker as well. I just quickly want to revisit some of the um, filter selections. As we mentioned a minute ago, and I'm just going to do this in a, in a, a different part because um, I wanted to have one with a greater number of segments. Uh, this is kind of help visualize the point I'm about to make. In the previous part model, I showed you that you can double select and at the top of a face segment and it will select a band and you know the same with the same with the edges. There is a quicker way of doing this and certainly a quicker for visualizing much like with the filters that we went over at the beginning you know where you can only select faces you can also select ones which only allow you to select an entire band as you can see here. So you have ones that are collinear with each other so they run in a continuous band and you also have, you know, this one where it selects all of the edges uh, which are parallel with each other, but they are not joined. Same again for the faces, you know, you can quickly select an entire segment um, and, you know, scale it out, scale it in, do what you will with it. But this is just a really quick way, um, particularly to help you visualize, you know, the area that you're going to be modifying. So let's just go ahead and undo that. One of the other things that's very useful is the expand or contract selection. So let's say you have, and this is why I added so many segments to this one. Let's say you have a shape with loads of uh, face segments and edges and points. And you know, if you pull on the edge of this, I'll pull this one out. It's gonna kind of be local to this area. But maybe I want it to pull out these faces a little bit more. So instead of having to select all of these faces manually using the control key, what I can do is, if I just do undo this, there we go. You can select a face and then go ahead here and expand. See, as you can see, it's selected all of the edges around it. Now you can manipulate this and you can see it's having a bigger effect on the area surrounding this one face segment because you have all the other face segments selected. Same works. You can contract the face selection. Um, and this also works, I should note, this also works for points. So let's say I want to move this point, right? Okay, if I move one point, it's going to pull on that small area. So let's go ahead and expand this selection. Now you can see it's pulling a bigger area. And if we expand again, you can see it's pulling a bigger and bigger area. Um, and actually, if you go under the advanced expand, um, you can control how far out that selection goes. 
So right now it's set to one. So when I click expand, it's going to go out one set of faces. Let's contract. If we set this to two and expand, you can see it's going to go for a bigger area. Probably in, in this case, it's not really what I desire. So you can just select one and then you can just do expand twice, for example. Now you can pull and push. However, if we go back, I just want to point something out which you might not have noticed, especially if you're new to this, uh, but you will certainly come across this later on. If I pull this one, it does that, okay? Which, which might be fine, it might be what you want. It's pulling a smaller area. Just go back and undo that. If you expand this, it's pulling all of these out. And as you can see, the initial selection that we made has kind of remained flat. So it's kind of coming to a plateau before it goes back in which is, is more often than not, not what we want because it's kind of creating this, it's coming around and then it's flat and then it's going back again. There's a very, very useful command called soft selection. So if I go ahead and undo this, this changes, make this one flat again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just to show you what it's like with that, okay? So you select that and you can see it's pulling only so far. It's not going up around here. It's not affecting these very much. Um, let's go ahead and undo that. If we select soft selection, this is such a good command. It allows you to kind of select and pull a greater area. It gives you less, a less harsh contrast in the geometry when you pull a face or an edge or a point. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example. Right now, it's set to zero. Sorry, it's set to zero here. So when we pull it out, you know, it looks more or less like it did before. So if we pull this all the way out here, you can see it's not really affecting any of these. Well, sorry, it's not affecting them very much. But we don't want that. I'm going to increase this to 20. Okay, so what this does, you can see it's starting to select these other points. Um, and they're kind of color coded by the amount it's affecting them. So now when I pull, can you see it's starting to tug, especially on these ones, which we didn't have before. So you can really control the sort of sensitivity of the area around the point you want to adjust. I'm gonna actually increase this up to 100, which is very extreme. You wouldn't wanna do that because it's actually, it's actually gonna pull like almost the entire shape. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you for an example. And as you can see, all of these points are now highlighted. So it's, it's gonna affect all of these. So when I pull this, you can, you can see. So it's having very little effect on the local area. But this might be something you want. You know, you might want to select it and set it to 50, for example. So it's not really going to do much to the back face, um, but it's, it's going to see how much softer this is. It's starting to come around as opposed to, if I bring this back down, let's set this back to 10, just for side-by-side -side comparison. You can see so it's back to 50 again. You see it's, it's color coding these points and it's starting to affect a much greater area. This is, this is really useful, especially if you want to create very smooth, organic, kind of like pebble-work shapes. So one of the other things I want to talk about real quick is uh, just the actions you can take in order to manipulate a surface or an edge or a point. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to select, using the control command, I'm going to select these three faces. As you can see, I've still left the soft selection on. So I'm going to come over and deselect that because um, I don't really want to manipulate all the way out here for this example. I just kind of want to show you um, more local. So we come in. I'm actually going to come and view this from one direction only. You have the rotate command. You have the scale command. You have move on the plane command. You can move vertically. You can move horizontally. You can scale vertically, you can scale horizontally. This is only gonna scale on the plane you're viewing from. If you scale using this one, so let me show you again. See how it's, it's affecting it only on that plane. If you select the purple one at the beginning, it's gonna scale it on all planes. So you can shrink it down or you can expand it out. These are the main things that you're gonna use. So pull this out and I can rotate it up and I can scale it out and then I can I can bring it this way um, and you and you can start creating some 
very quickly start creating some very complex shapes that would otherwise take a long time to create using just sort of lofts, using splines and so on. The last feature I want to go over is very useful and it's not something that I can leave out. It's the edge weight command. If you imagine each one of these lines is tugging on these surfaces, kind of like, gra it's just pulling it kind of like a gravitational pull. Now these, these faces are, and, th and this, is a, this is a great time to use the cage viewing option. This is the normal one, the, the one that I've been working in up to this point. This is one of the great examples of when to use this, this cage function, just really helps visualize what's going on. At the moment, the edge weight is set to zero. If you go from the side, you can see it's pulling up to about here. And I'm gonna stay in this side view because I wanna show you with those edges selected, if I increase this, let's just say to 20%, it's pulling it more towards that corner or that edge rather. This is a really, really useful command if you're creating a pinch in some bodywork or somewhere where you have the curvature is becoming more and more sharp as you go around a surface or something. If I set this to 100, it's going to be a complete pinch. So it looks, it looks really weird here in this example. So I'll, I'll select all of these ones here and give you a better example. Set those to 100 as well. And what you end up with is a perfectly sharp corner. And as you can note, these edges are color coded also depending on how much weight you put on them. So if I select, select all of these again, they're all set to 100. If I set them to 50, you can see the color changes. It's a lighter purple. And if I change it to 20, or 10 rather, You can see, you know, you can put in a really small amount. This is, this is 10%, so you can see it's, it's pulling up towards this edge a bit more. This is a great feature, which we'll use later on in the series of videos.